Up until now, farmers have managed to keep pace with the food needs of a growing world population. But this increasing demand has only been satisfied by using up more and more of our planet's resources, including land. It's estimated that as much as half the Earth's habitable surface is now given over to agriculture. But that has come at a cost. Farming is the biggest cause of biodiversity loss and a major contributor to climate change. But pressure to bring even more land into production is only going to increase. Over the next 30 years, there will be two billion more mouths to feed. Demand for meat alone has tripled over the past decade. And experts say that we will have to double crop production over the next 20 years just to feed all the livestock that will be eaten. So what if there was a way to grow more food but using less space? By growing upwards rather than outwards. Farming vertically rather than horizontally. It is a method of agriculture that is being pioneered here at Stirling, Suffolk, just outside Ipswich. A high-tech cathedral of glass, the size of 11 football pitches. Growing tomatoes, lots of them. And the whole purpose of this glass house is to grow tomatoes that are absolutely full of flavour, but in the most environmentally friendly way that we can do it. This is a form of vertical farming. In a season, we're growing around 13 million tomatoes a year. Our main defining factor is not actually how big we are in total size, it's the way we grow. That's our, our, our big point of difference. We take the plant from the propagator. It's around eight weeks old when it arrives. Eight weeks later, it will have reached a height of around two and a half meters. By the end of its growing cycle, so another 10 months on, it will have reached a height of around 16 meters. You can take a plant on longer than that, but because the efficiency of taking nutrients 16 meters up, and we're not talking about a tree with a huge trunk, we're talking about a tomato plant, it struggles and struggles as time goes on. These giant tomato plants grow 365 days a year, bathed in a mixture of natural and artificial lighting. Their roots not in soil, but in tiny containers of coconut fiber. A carbon dioxide filtration system supercharges growth. The more carbon dioxide that you've got available to the plant in the atmosphere, the greater the uh, efficiency of photosynthesis. And if you can improve the efficiency, then the plant will just flourish. It's just like giving us a protein bar uh, as, as opposed to just a, a, a snack. You know, you, you'll, you'll, you'll benefit from that, and, and that's exactly what the plant does. The whole process is managed with the help of artificial intelligence or just starting to control it through AI technology with the use of grow sense cameras, with the use of thermal imaging, um, multi-layer temperature gradients so that we can monitor exactly precisely what's happening in the growing tip, the, the middle of the plant and, and the ripening points. And the growers are proud of their record in helping to preserve another precious resource. We live in a, a relatively dry county of Suffolk. We capture all the roof rainwater we are virtually self-sufficient on water, which is almost unheard of. I, I, you, know, you can't imagine a farm being in a position where they did not use any water other than what landed on their own land. Um, and 2021 will be the same. Across the Atlantic, another vertical farming pioneer has built what is the largest farm of its kind in the world. New Jersey-based Aero Farms grows vegetables under artificial light, the roots of the plants dangling in a nutrient-rich water vapor. This is our ninth farm. This is what we call vertical farming. We define that as layer upon layer of plant growth. We grow without sun, without soil, which plants don't need. They don't need sun, they need spectrum of light. They don't need soil, they need nutrients and micronutrients. We can typically grow with 95% less water. And the goal is to produce a lot of plants in a small footprint to feed populations locally. We've grown about 550 different varieties of plants. In this facility on any given day, we grow about 30 different leafy greens. So David, how would you compare vertical farming with field farming in terms of 
use of land and, and how much less you need with vertical farming? So in New Jersey, we have over 300 times the productivity per square meter than a field farm in New Jersey. Leafy greens in the field typically have three harvests. We at Aero Farms have 26 harvests. We grow a plant just to break that down in about 14 days. In the field, that's about 30 to 40 days. Plus we stack 14 levels high. We are as much a data science company, data analytics company as anything else. So with massive amounts of data that correlate to the output, the performance of the plants, we're able to constantly narrow in and optimize plant growth while doing more with less. Give, give us a prediction of 20 years time, global agriculture, what, what's it gonna look like? So the problems are abundant. I'm not saying vertical farming is gonna solve them all. Today, the economics work at Leafy Greens, but, and the, but we're growing more and more varieties, reducing capital cost, operating costs, so we could help work with greenhouse growers, work with field farmers to create better solutions for humanity, for the, for the world. But using land more efficiently doesn't have to be all about high tech. This is another type of vertical farming. We've got a cereal field here. We're growing grain to feed chickens. And behind me, we've got trees growing. We've got fruit trees, we've got timber trees. They're gonna grow above the crop. Their roots are gonna go below the roots of the cereal crop. So we're using the Earth's surface much more efficiently that way. How to grow more food using fewer resources is one of the biggest challenges facing farmers today. Although still in its early stages of development, vertical farming is showing us one way we could sustainably feed a growing population in the future.